All right, question four was a resonance structure question, just getting used to moving around the electrons and being able to see what's happening. Um, this is particularly important for a case like this because once we talk about aromatic rings, which is not until organic two, but once we get to that point, this is an intermediate you will see all the time, or ones that are very similar, where you've got a cation on the ring and not entirely an aromatic system left. And there's some reasons why that's going to do what it does. Now, first thing I've done here is the top left, I've redrawn the original structure to make our lives a little easier. And I've drawn a couple of blank versions of the structure without any of the other material around. The reason I did that is because it's very important to get in mind, in a resonant structure, the only thing moving around are lone pairs of electrons and pi bonds. As a result of that, cations will move around as well, but no atoms are going anywhere, which means every sigma bond in the structure, what you're seeing on everything but that first one at the top left, is going nowhere. None of those changes at all. Second, you have to have either an empty orbital, a lone pair of electrons, or a pi bond to be able to participate in resonance. This carbon does not have that. That carbon is doing nothing in resonance. So if you found yourself using that or going through it to get to the chlorine, no, that's impossible. So let's talk about what does happen. In the first case, it's a good idea to get lone pairs of electrons drawn into everything. Even if we're not going to use them, we'll put the ones on the chlorine. We're not going to be able to use them because we'd have to get past that carbon first. So those are going nowhere. Drawing those is a formality here. It doesn't help us. Useful for practice, but not useful for actually fixing or understanding resonance at all. There are two other pairs here on the oxygen. And that's going to be the source of one direction that resonance can go in. Notice I've split this off. Um, so I've got one structure by itself down at the bottom, and I've got others off to the right. So we're going to look at that one first. And that is if the oxygen decides to play a role here by donating one of those pairs of electrons inward, forming a double bond to the oxygen, giving me the cation on the O. If I do that, everything else is where it was before, which means those pi bonds are still there. They haven't changed from where the original structure had them. So this is one possible resonance structure. In the other cases, those pairs are not involved. So I'm going to put them back. What I'm going to use instead are the ones that are actually in the ring. So if I did that, what I've got is a double bond that's now migrated downward and left me here with the cation over from where it began. And that's the whole point of resonance is delocalization of charge, move it around. It hurts less that way. But that's not the end of the story because we have another pi bond, so we can keep going in that direction and move that other pi bond to this spot. So I have one that has moved here. The first one I moved is here. The cation now is on the far side. And that's as far as I can go. I can't go all the way around because I can't do resonance at this carbon. The center one between the chlorine and the hydrogen is useless to me. It might as well not be there for the purposes of resonance. I can't do anything with it. So these are my new resonance structures. This one, this one, and this one. So a total of four. I've shifted that electron, that cation around to four different spots. That's pretty good. That's a very stable situation. If I can move an unfavorable anion or cation around, that helps to stabilize the structure. It makes it more likely it would form in the first place. So uh, what you won't see, which some of you did, is two double bonds coming to the same atom. Um, that requires SP hybridization plus, in the case of anything that you could have drawn here, would have had five bonds to a carbon, which is as close to blasphemy as you can get in organic chemistry. So please don't do that. Count the bonds and don't draw more than four of them to a carbon. It hurts my head. 